Hey there, ever wondered if your heart is singing with vitality or whispering trouble? Maybe. Today, we're diving deep into the rhythm of your cardiovascular health. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally, but fear not. I thought we were gonna die. We're here to arm you with knowledge. So, let's unpack this journey together. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. First up, we'll decode the seven signs your body might be sending you. Subtle hints that all may not be well with your heart. Keep your eyes peeled for these red flags. Next, we'll delve into the seven classic symptoms that might be tapping at your body's door, signaling potential heart issues. Could you or a loved one be experiencing these warning signs? Let's find out. But wait, we're not done yet. In the final leg of our journey, we'll equip you with seven valuable secrets, the tips and tricks to steer clear of heart problems in the future. Prevention is key, and we've got the keys to unlock a heart-healthy future. Get ready for a ride filled with insights and revelations. This isn't your average health talk, it's a comprehensive guide to safeguarding your heart. Stick around until the end, because trust me, there's plenty of groundbreaking info you won't want to miss. Before we get started, let's take a moment to spread the word and make a real impact. Liking this video isn't just about showing support, it's about reaching those who may not have easy access to medical care. With every like, we're one. Step closer to sharing crucial health information with those who need it most. And don't stop there, hit that share button and send this video to your friends and family. Together, we can save lives and make a difference. Now, let's open up the conversation. Do you suspect you have a heart condition? Where are you tuning in from? Share your journey with us in the comments below. Let's support each other and learn from one another's experiences. And here we are, diving into the seven telltale signs that could be signaling a heart problem. Now, let's talk about something you might not have considered before the first sign. Get ready to pay closer attention to people's ears from now on. Why? Well, because there's a fascinating little clue hidden there that could indicate trouble in the heart's arteries, the coronary arteries, or the carotid arteries. Believe it or not, back in the 1970s, Dr. Sanders Frank made a curious observation. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. He noticed that many of his patients with angina or chest pain had a peculiar diagonal crease in their ear. He called it Frank's sign. But what's the connection between the heart and the ear? You might wonder. One theory suggests that the same factors responsible for damaging the inner lining of the arteries might also manifest as this crease in the ear. But here's the twist not everyone with Frank's sign has a blockage. In fact, out of 100 people sporting this diagonal crease, 30 of them have nothing to worry about. It's simply a sign of aging. However, the younger the person, the more attention this sign deserves. So, if someone in their 40s has Frank's sign, it's wise to be more vigilant compared to someone in their 80s, where it's more likely just a sign of old age. But here's the catch the sensitivity of this sign is quite low. In other words, out of 100 people with heart blockages, only 40 will exhibit this crease. So, having a smooth ear doesn't necessarily mean you're in the clear. Let's talk about the second sign hair loss on the legs. What? It might sound surprising. But losing hair first on the shins and then on the thighs could be a red flag for peripheral arterial disease pad, which essentially means clogged arteries in the legs. Now, here's the kicker atherosclerosis. The underlying condition of pad isn't just limited to one spot. If you've got blockages in your legs, chances are you might have them elsewhere, including the coronary arteries supplying blood to your heart. Now, here's why hair loss happens. Hair follicles thrive on nutrients, but they need good circulation to get those nutrients. If your arteries are clogged with fatty plaque, it means less blood and oxygen reaching the hair follicles, resulting in hair loss. But wait, there's more besides losing hair. People with pad might also notice smoother, shinier skin, cold skin, and slower nail growth on the affected legs. However, it's essential to note that leg hair loss can happen for reasons other than pad. Genetics play a role, and sometimes, you can lose hair just from the friction of rubbing against your pants. So, while leg hair loss might ring alarm bells, it's essential to consider other factors too. Let's talk about the third sign xanthalasma. Ever glanced at someone's eyes and noticed a yellowish plaque on their upper eyelid? That's xanthalasma for you. Now, 
don't worry it's usually painless and more of a cosmetic concern that develops gradually over time. Xanthelasma falls under a category called xanthomas, which are basically cholesterol deposits in the skin. It's more common in middle-aged women and tends to hang out in the inner corner of the eye, mostly on the upper eyelid. Here's the kicker about half of the folks who get xanthelasma also have dyslipidemia, which means high cholesterol or triglycerides levels. Interestingly, only a tiny fraction of people with high cholesterol actually end up with xanthelasma. But here's where it gets serious researchers have found that having xanthelasma can up your risk of heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. So, if you spot xanthelasma creeping up, it might be a good idea to get your blood checked for cholesterol and triglyceride levels just to make sure everything's in check. After all, it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to matters of the heart. Let's delve into the fourth sign Arcus Senilis or Halo Senilis. As the name suggests, this one's age-related and tends to show up more in older folks. Picture this, it's caused by cholesterol deposits on the edge of the cornea, presenting as a white or grayish appearance that's visible above or below the outer part of the cornea. Sometimes this shadowy effect can even encroach on the iris, which is the colored part of your eye. So, imagine your eye going from dark to gradually lighter. Now, here's the interesting bit Arcus senilis doesn't mess with your vision and doesn't call for any treatment. But here's where it gets tricky when it shows up in younger folks, especially before hitting 45, it might be waving a red flag. Why? Because it could be a sign of severe dyslipidemia, meaning sky-high cholesterol and triglyceride levels. And yup, you guessed it this scenario is linked to an increased risk of heart disease. But here's the silver lining seeing a halo around your cornea when you're older is pretty normal. In fact, about 60% of folks over 60 sport it, and by the time you hit 80, it's almost a given nearly everyone's got it. So, if you're in the 60 plus, club and notice that telltale halo, no need to fret it's just another part of the aging journey. Let's dive into the fifth sign cyanosis. Now, imagine your skin taking on a bluish or purple hue. Sure, it could be a sign you've stepped into the deep freeze, but sometimes, it's your body waving a red flag. When your skin turns cyanotic, yes, that's the fancy term for it, it might mean trouble in paradise. Visualize this. If a patch of your skin goes all shades of blue or purple when you're supposed to be feeling warm and toasty, it could mean that area isn't getting the oxygen-rich blood at CRAVs. And guess what? Oxygen-rich blood is supposed to be a vibrant red. Now, if you're also huffing and puffing, feeling like you've just sprinted a marathon when you've barely moved, that's a whole other can of worms. It could signal trouble brewing in your lungs think pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, or even heart failure. Yep, when the heart's not pulling its weight and pumping oxygenated blood, your body's not getting what it needs to function. And don't even get me started on the heart issues, there's a laundry list of potential culprits, from congenital defects to conditions like tetralogy of Fallot, where cyanosis is the body's way of saying, Houston, we have a problem. Let's talk about the sixth sign, ulcers. You know, those stubborn sores that just won't quit especially when they set up camp on your legs or feet. Now, they might seem innocent enough, but they're like little red flags from your body, signaling that something's amiss. Envision this scenario. You've got these ulcers chilling on your legs or feet, and they're not exactly in a hurry to pack up and leave. It's like they're throwing a party, and your circulation's taking the hit. Turns out, there could be a traffic jam in your arteries, blocking the flow of blood to those areas. And here's the kicker walking becomes a bit of a chore. Your legs throw in the towel faster than you can say marathon, and you're hit with cramps and fatigue. Ouch. Now normally, ulcers come with a side of pain, but if you've got something like diabetic neuropathy nerve damage, courtesy of diabetes pain might be a no-show. Sneaky, right? There's a whole world of ulcers out there, each with its own story to tell. Arterial ulcers like to hang out on the outside of your leg, making themselves known on your heels and toes. They're not big fans of bleeding though. Then there's their cousin, venous ulcers. These guys prefer the inside of the leg and bleeding? Oh, they're all about it. They're more common in folks with varicose veins or venous thrombosis, making them the rebels of the ulcer gang. Let's dive into the seventh sign, swelling of the legs, ankles, and feet. Paint a mental picture of this. You kick off your shoes after a long day, ready to relax but there's a little something extra going on. Your legs and ankles are feeling a bit puffy. It's like your shoes suddenly shrunk, and your ankles are putting on their best bread loaf impression. But wait, 
there's more. Give those legs a gentle squeeze, and Voila a dimple appears like a little souvenir from the day's adventures. Now, you might notice this swelling more towards the end of the day, when gravity's been working its magic, putting extra pressure on the veins in your legs. But fear not, there's a trick to tame this swelling beast. When you hit the sack and elevate those legs, it's like hitting the reset button. Gravity takes a breather, and your swelling bids adieu, leaving you feeling lighter than air. Ah, the wonders of a little elevation. Let's start unraveling the mysteries of your heart's signals. First up, shortness of breath, also known as dyspnea. Imagine this scenario, you're pushing yourself, maybe a little too hard, and suddenly, you're gasping for air like you just ran a marathon. But you only climbed a flight of stairs. It's like your body's fatigue levels are playing a cruel joke on you, leaving you breathless even with the slightest exertion. The more you do, the harder it is to catch your breath. Could this be your heart waving a red flag? Visualize this. You've been coughing persistently, and something's off about it. Instead of the usual dry hack, your cough brings up white or pink mucus. It's like your lungs are trying to tell you something, signaling that there might be fluid lurking where it shouldn't be in those delicate air sacs. Don't brush it off as just another cough. Your body's trying to communicate, so listen up. It's time to schedule that appointment with your doctor and get to the bottom of this. Here's a vivid scenario. Imagine as you retire to bed, the need for additional pillows arises in a bid to find that elusive comfort. Yet, as nights pass, the struggle intensifies. Lying flat becomes unbearable, forcing you to abandon the bed altogether, opting for the uneasy respite of a chair. Then, in the silent hours, sleep is disrupted by sudden choking a frightening awakening known as paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. These distressing symptoms echo a silent cry from your body, hinting at a potential heart-related concern that demands attention. Paint a mental picture of this. A once vibrant routine now feels like an uphill battle. Everyday tasks that used to be effortless now drain you of energy. Whether it's navigating the aisles of a store, ascending a flight of stairs, or simply styling your hair, each action seems like an insurmountable challenge. The relentless fatigue weighs heavily on your shoulders, leaving you longing for the vitality you once possessed. These struggles stem from the heart's inability to adequately supply your muscles and tissues with the vital oxygen and nutrients they crave. It's as if your body's energy source is running on empty, leaving you feeling perpetually drained and weak. See this in your imagination. You finally settle into bed, ready to embrace the tranquility of sleep. But just as you begin to drift off, an unwelcome interruption shatters the peace. You find yourself repeatedly jolting awake, compelled to stumble to the bathroom multiple times throughout the night. This frustrating ritual, known as nocturia, disrupts your rest and leaves you feeling more fatigued than refreshed come morning. Nocturia has many possible triggers, but when the heart fails to function optimally, it can lead to an excess buildup of fluid in the body. During the night, this surplus fluid demands release, prompting frequent trips to the bathroom and further disrupting your precious sleep cycle. Envision this scenario. You set out for a leisurely stroll, eager to soak in the sights and sounds of the world around you. But with each step, an unexpected obstacle emerges. A sharp, stabbing pain that grips your calf, halting your progress. It's not a constant ache. Instead, it comes and goes, waxing and waning with your movement. When you pause to catch your breath, the pain subsides, only to flare up again as soon as you resume walking. This frustrating phenomenon is known as intermittent claudication, and it's a clear signal that something isn't quite right with your blood flow. As you walk, your muscles demand more oxygen-rich blood, but if circulation is impaired often due to narrowed or blocked arteries your calf muscles are deprived of the nourishment they need, resulting in discomfort. The pain eases when you stop moving, as the demand for blood diminishes, but returns once you're back. On your feet, restarting the cycle of discomfort. Imagine this. You're going about your day when suddenly, a sensation grips your chest a tightness, a heaviness, a burning sensation that refuses to be ignored. Your mind races as you try to rationalize it away, dismissing it as a muscle ache or indigestion. But deep down, a nagging fear lingers. Could it be something more sinister? That's the dilemma of chest pain, a symptom that demands attention and respect. It's not just any discomfort. It's a warning sign that your heart may be in distress, lasting more than a fleeting moment. It lingers, a persistent reminder of potential danger. But chest pain is a shape-shifter, assuming various forms pressure, tightness, 
burning making its presence known in unpredictable ways. It may radiate to your arm, neck, back, or jaw, leaving no part of your upper body untouched. Sweating, paleness, nausea, and dizziness may accompany it, painting a vivid picture of potential cardiac trouble in the face of these symptoms. Hesitation is not an option. Seeking medical attention becomes paramount, as swift action can mean the difference between life and death. When your heart speaks, it's essential to listen and act without delay. Here are some tips for your action plan to keep your heart healthy and guard against potential problems. 1. Get moving. Break free from your sedentary lifestyle. Exercise isn't just about sculpting your physique. It's a lifeline for your heart. Take up low-impact activities like walking, cycling, or swimming to get your blood flowing and clear those chronic blockages from your veins and arteries. 2. Stub out the smoke. Kick the habit for good. Smoking wreaks havoc on your arteries, inviting trouble like heart attacks, strokes, and even dementia. Quitting isn't easy, but the rewards for your heart are immeasurable. 3. Shed excess weight. Say goodbye to those unwanted pounds. Carrying excess weight burdens your body from your blood pressure to your joints. Opt for a diet rich in fruits, veggies, whole grains, and olive oil, while cutting back on red meat and processed foods. 4. Know your family history. Stay vigilant if heart issues run in your family. A history of heart problems among relatives should put you on high alert. More tests and careful monitoring may be necessary to stay ahead of potential issues. 5. Mind your cholesterol keep those levels in check. Opt for heart-healthy foods like oats and steer clear of trans fats and saturated fats. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, medication may be necessary. Don't hesitate to follow your doctor's advice. 6. Control your blood sugar. Take charge if you have diabetes or prediabetes. Keep glucose levels in check, aiming for a glycated hemoglobin level below 7. It's a crucial step in safeguarding your heart health. 7. Manage your blood pressure keep it in the safe zone. Aim for a blood pressure below 120 over 80, but tailor your target to your individual health needs. Regular monitoring and medication, if needed, can help you stay on track. Remember, your heart's health is in your hands. If you notice any signs or symptoms that raise concern shortness of breath, chest pain, or otherwise don't hesitate to seek medical advice, your heart will thank you for it. Hey there, did you find this video helpful? Yes. Be sure to share it with others so they too can benefit from this valuable knowledge. Now, what's on your playlist for the next video? Before you go, I've got to more recommendations for you. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next installment. Thanks for tuning in. And here's to your continued journey to health and longevity with Longevity Deprocessed.